From the historic hand building in St. Paul, it's the Haberdashers Couch. I'm Kendrick, inviting you to the show, starring Jaime and Dorset, featuring Todd Walker, also featuring Amy Charlo. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Jaime. Welcome to another show of the Haberdashers Couch, where you don't have to pay somebody to listen to you. Thanks for tuning in. I have a very special guest with me today, Mr. Alan Miller, who is a TV host, creator of Access to Democracy, columnist, and a novelist. And he just published his first political thriller called Holding Court, and I'm lucky enough to have him here to talk about it. Alan, welcome to the show. And he's here with a Jaime shirt on. <laughs> Uh, so that makes it special in and of itself. <laughs> it's it's funny because I, it's it, whenever I ask somebody to come to the store, yeah. inevitably they they try to dress in something I put them in. <laughs> it, it, well, it, you've been putting me in clothes for uh, <laughs> when Jaime's was just a little leather right? shop. It, it gets I mean, me we right go here. back a long way. <laughs> you really do. Yeah. yeah, I've been on your show, and now I'm on the other yeah. side. Yeah. And um, I I love your show. I love being on your show. You do a, a great job. And I, I, I want to talk about your book, but first I want to go, I want to get a perspective of Syracuse University, New York, 1955. Well, 51 to 55. 51 yeah. to 55. Undergraduate, anyway. Yeah, and you went in as a journalist and political uh, double major. Right. What happened <laughs> between their law? <laughs> How did you find law? Uh, it found me. Yeah. It, uh, you know, it came along and mm -hmm. uh, my parents said, what are you going to do after college? And I said, well, I'll be a journalist and mm -hmm. then you'll starve to death. <laughs> I said, well, I can be a politician, which I ultimately became in New York. Right. Uh, and uh, for many years. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's ironic. Lawyers read a lot, right? And they tell stories. Right? They're kind of keepers of stories because they collect information, right? And they write, they write basically a script when they go to court, and, and they present it. And so much of holding court, of course, is about the law, and it's about right. the Supreme Court, right. and uh, about the kidnapping of a Supreme mm -hmm. Court justice, which has never happened in real life, right. although with the current court, it's maybe not a bad <laughs> idea, but... Uh, <laughs> In any event. But the, this, this book was based off of an article that you read? Is that true? Well, it was, it was kind of prescient. Mm -hmm. uh, I started reading, and I read, you know, four newspapers a day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw that there was going to be a water crisis yes. in the West. Which there still is. So this has been actually, it's been around for 12 years, this concept. Mm -hmm. First it started with fracking. Right. And then fracking passed and right. it started with wind and solar mm -hmm. and that passed and then the pandemic arrived right and i had the time and then i saw that sure. there's going to be a water crisis right. so i was kind something of prescient, relevant right kind of prescient right and i focused it on that uh, a mythical case before mm -hmm. the supreme court mm -hmm. and there are now relevant cases before the supreme court right. on water yeah, uh, you know things that people didn't know the Colorado Compact and things sure. like that, sure. and the river drying up. Right. So you remind me of of, of Roman Polanski's Chinatown. A you know, in of, Southern California. Yeah. yeah. When they were, yeah. uh, when private investors were trying to uh, wrangle the power of water. One of my favorite movies, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Beautiful, beautifully shot yeah. movie. Yeah. But um, it ha it has that 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 feel to it, you know. Yeah. Um, writing is a life's practice. Well, I've been writing since I'm 10, 12 years right. old. Right. I was actually, uh, before I was editor of my high school newspaper, uh, I was writing a sports column for the, the community we lived in on Long Island. Mm -hmm. Their sports writer left, mm -hmm. and at uh, 14 years of age, I became the sports writer <laughs> once a week. Right. And I, I moved from there to Newsday in the sports department. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wrote for Newsday. Sure. I traveled to Bayshore on the Long Island Railroad. Right. Every, every night. And uh, is so when you start writing that early. Is there, it, when are you confident as a writer? <laughs> Never. <laughs> because because there's nobody. You're in it by yourself. 
basically. Never. You and, are and you are alone. You are alone. And yes. I have sixty three thousand words done on the next book. Right. No confidence in it at all right. until I turn it over to the publisher right. and let them take a look at it. You know, isn't it amazing too about writing is that when you start getting into the research, it it compounds itself. Well, that's where law stood me in great stead. Yeah. I went on from undergraduate to Syracuse Law. And as a matter of fact, uh, Syracuse and Syracuse Law are part of this book mm -hmm. because some of the main characters, I put them in Syracuse. Right. Uh, he, he, writing familiar things. Sure. As a matter of fact, Tuesday, uh, this coming Tuesday, I'm leaving for North Dakota. Okay. Why? Because... The beginning of my next book starts in North Dakota, all right. and I have all these locations that I've already written about, sure. and, you and I see want them. to verify right. the, my accuracy, because yeah. that's really important to me. We have a lot in common, because I'm, I'm shooting a film that takes place in South Dakota, and I'm taking a cross-country trip to Spearfish to make sure that what I'm envisioning <clears throat> is what I'm writing. Can I ask you a question? What you I, can ask me as what many I think is What I think want. is significant about the book is that I feel like you get out of the way of the characters and you allow the characters to have their own voice. I try. Yes. I try. I, I uh, try to make them people that you can relate to. And some mm -hmm. of the uh, reviews and critiques we've had mm -hmm. are these were very relatable characters. Right. Do they write themselves? They don't write themselves. I have to give them a nudge. Right, right. <laughs> and, and do you hold them in suspension? Once you stop writing the 63,000 words, do you hold them in suspension until you, until you pick up the typewriter again and, and, and then reactivate them? Does well, that make sense? I've gone beyond the typewriter to a computer, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to use typewriter because it, because it was relatable. So, um, I, so, so then this, this was uh, it's a story about the Supreme Court justice kidnapped while he was on his way to work. Right. Right. And... I know that you wrote your dog in <laughs> and the she's, beginning. And she's in the next one also. <laughs> well, that's, that's, yeah. My dog is in the next one, my, right? my actual dog now. Uh, that's his dog there, but dogs are always going to be a part of my writing. Yeah, yeah. I, I know your love for dogs. Yeah. You wrote a, a couple, photo, a photo book and a... I wrote a non-fiction yeah, non book. non-fiction book, yeah. Uh, my name was Toby. Yeah. About, yeah. And the funny thing yeah. is that started... So I was at a, uh, a writer's... Uh, conference mm -hmm. and I had the book out along with this on display mm -hmm. people started buying the Toby book <laughs> <laughs> my name was Toby and uh, so these are quick and, and and fast little chapters and when I was reading it what what I what I what I liked about that it it didn't get too overly wordy it didn't get too overly intellectual and it allowed me to be in a scene for two to five pages, and it pushed it along nicely. I, I like that style. And, and that is the style that I'm comfortable yeah, with. Yeah, it's, it's, <clears throat> it's in and out. It's, uh, in, interesting that you said that about uh, the chapters, because yeah. I just had it critiqued by a uh, producer mm -hmm. in uh, Hollywood, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the things that he said was, maybe the chapters are too long. I'm saying... Four pages is yeah. too long, uh, you know. You know seven, seven, seven pages, you know, for in film is is like, <laughs> it's like one minute. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> so but I think you're shooting uh, the the time signature is right. I think I, I if you want to produce, you know, it. I didn't write it for film. Right. Although I taught film for many years, but I didn't write it for film. I wrote it because I wanted to write a novel. Mm -hmm. I wanted to write a political novel. Mm -hmm. I thought a thriller was the way to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was very comfortable with it. Right. So you go through your first draft, proof it, and then second, third, fourth draft. How does that work? It never ends. Never ends. Never. So ends. and actually, when you're when you publish, <laughs> do you say, "Man, I could I could have gone look, deeper there," or I when you look at yeah, it yeah. after the book is in your hand, as this book right. ultimately was last September, mm -hmm. and uh, that's as long as it's been out. Had a lot of critiques, very good reviews on Amazon. Mm -hmm. But you look at it and you say, oh, I could have done that differently. Mm -hmm. I could have changed that character, etc." Are you self-published? No. I, uh, well, 
A lot of, a lot you, can't, of, you can't say self-publish. Yeah. My publisher is Calumet Editions uh -huh. in Edina. Okay. And uh, they're a boutique publisher mm -hmm. that have a different arrangements. Mm -hmm. I didn't take this to a printer and, and publish it. Right. I have them doing it. Mm -hmm. And I just, as a matter of fact, I just got a publicist mm -hmm. uh, because I, I want the books to sell a little better. Young writers out there... The, the, the landscape of access to publishing, self-publishing, has, has really changed. It's unlimited. It's unlimited. And, I, and I, I feel that way, too, about access to technology as far as filmmaking is concerned. Anybody can pick up a f cell phone and make a movie. Now, if you're good and you write and you practice, you can also publish. You have to be able to stick to it. Mm-hmm. You have to, you know, when I started writing, and I'm not talking here, but when I started writing columns and things like that, right. uh, <clears throat> I thought that my words were chiseled in stone, mm -hmm. and I was not a good editor. And I learned that you have to throw things away yeah. in holding court. That's uh, I, I threw away whole chapters yeah. that, you know, I loved when I wrote them, but Mm -hmm. It just didn't work. Right. You have to be really courageous. And, uh, yeah. Yep. Courageous, and you have, to have, you have to have a good, strong idea of where you're headed. Upcoming events, we got June 3rd, 1 p.m. at Barnes & Noble, Minneapolis. Yeah. A book uh, signing. As a matter of fact, that's up in the air right now okay. because they're having a problem. Okay. Uh, the Barnes & Noble, but that one's upcoming. There is a, uh, well, th there'll be a uh, writer's show uh, in October, probably, that okay. I'll be you know, exhibiting at that. And we have uh, another bookstore coming up with the date is not fixed yet. Okay. And uh, and we can access that uh, through your website? Can apps access a holding court. Okay. Has, a, you know, mm -hmm. has its own. But uh, you can access it through uh, really bo Amazon okay. or Barnes & Noble. That's, that's the uh, yeah. best way Good to do it. Good for you. And, and I'll tell you, so you're working on Accidental Murderer, uh, a story involving land sales and murder. And, and then you also <laughs> are working on the writerscorner.org. This Writer's Corner, uh, it's launched a TV program. You launched a TV program. We just started. Our first show was April 28th, where we are featuring every month we're going to feature two of Minnesota's great writers. Uh, for instance, we have William Kent Krieger coming, okay. Kruger coming mm -hmm. in this month. Nice. And uh, who's virtually the dean of our writers right. here, uh, along with Carl Brookins, mm -hmm. who uh, has the distinction of being the only novelist older than me uh, in the state of Minnesota. <laughs> but, uh, and he's written uh, four or five books, okay. uh, really good books, All right. uh, about the sea. Uh, and it's really fascinating. We had uh, David Housewright in, mm -hmm. who was an Edgar Award winner, and right. he won three Minnesota Book Awards last Great. month. So are you going to? I'm, I'm really excited to say that we're also going to have a sponsor called Jaime's Haberdashery. <laughs> and you can get a T-shirt, folks. Alan, I there's so much more to talk about, and I'd love to have you back on the show again. And I can't thank you enough for your support in the past, but also just coming on the show today and, and sharing just a, just a, a, a good look at, uh, at writing and, and your approach and uh, the significance of, of sticking to it. And well, I, I would uh, love to come back. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, it's probably mandatory that we do that because right. Sharon is very upset yeah. that she's not here with me right. today, but she's... For filming she's, access she's, to the She's doing another show. <laughs> anyway, folks, thanks for joining us today. Alan, thank you very much. We'll see you next week.